So at the Oxford ACS, we believe that these issues that Lamy has exposed need to be exposed, and there is a national conversation to be had. However, we have had this conversation before, and we will have it again. And the question then is, are we willing to critically engage with the solutions being offered by various organizations and grassroots movements to the issues that are at hand? I think the data does show uh, quite evidently that there are issues of uh, institutionalized problems at Oxford. But what it does not show is that Oxford is a microcosm that reflects the deep structural issues that are embedded in wider British society and in the British education system. Wait a minute, are you are you saying I mean, I'm, try, I'm trying to put this into plain English here, uh, Joshua? Are you are you saying look, there is a problem, but it's not just Oxford's fault? I'm saying that there is some responsibility on both sides. What the admissions data does not tell us is how many young black students are actively discouraged from applying from Ox- to Oxford despite achieving the grades because, quote-unquote, Oxford isn't for them. So I- in that respect, although there are issues on uh, earlier on in the academic journey, Oxford does have a responsibility to try and change perceptions. It has recognized this and is putting the resources. I must emphasize that it is putting the resources behind movements like the Oxford ACS to change the perceptions. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of Oxford outreach programs going on, just not just to state schools, but particularly, you know, schools in inner city areas uh, where a large number of uh, black students are more likely to, to be than perhaps in the shires uh, where perhaps they're getting a lot of their students. Toby Young, um, you, you yourself went to Oxford. You've been debating this online, I've noticed. Uh, I've, indeed, I've been retweeting you quite a lot in the last 24 hours and you, you and I have both written about this issue before. Does Oxford have a problem with black people? Well, um, it has a problem in that um, there aren't nearly enough Uh, black British students at Oxford. Um, But uh, I don't think that um, Oxford is to blame. Um, uh, I mean, the the problem is um, that, first of all, not enough black British students get three A's at A-level, which is what you need in order to get a place at Oxford. Uh, Then of the, I mean, uh, less than 700 Uh, uh, just under 700 a year, roughly. Uh, And of those, um, only about half of them actually apply uh, to Oxford. Um, uh, And and they often apply for the most popular subjects, um, subjects like medicine and law, where your chances of getting in are lower than if you apply yeah. for less well, So from whatever like background, there's just, more, there's just more competition for those places. I would say the figures for 2016 I've got in front of me, Oxford received 12,193 applications from British students, so students domiciled in the UK. They've got obviously a lot of foreign students as well. But looking at students who live in the UK, 12,000 plus uh, students applied. And of those in, t- in 2016, only 328 uh, marked themselves on their own forms as a black British um, that, I mean, that, that, so, so even once you look at that, you're going to look at a pretty low percentage. You can't, you can't actually give places to people who haven't applied. Yeah, and at one point that David Lammy and other critics of Oxford make is that of uh, the black British students that apply, um, only about 16% get in compared to 24% of white people who apply. And, and that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of uh, vital statistic which supposedly proves that Oxford is institutionally biased. And these white is, you know, tutors are saying they don't want black students. No, the, 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 the reason the acceptance rate for black students is lower than it is for white students is not because Oxford is institutionally biased. It's because um, uh, black students are applying for the most popular subjects where the acceptance rates are lower. And if you take that into account, actually, uh, the acceptance rates for black students at Oxford is above average. They actually do slightly better than the average students. So the issue isn't institutional bias. It's that there just aren't enough black British students applying. And the fault for that lies with the education system. As Joshua said, we need, we need to make sure more black students are getting the qualifications to enable them to apply and that when they apply they're being properly advised and they're not just applying for the most popular subjects but for a whole range of subjects but the fault doesn't lie with Oxford okay. I mean it, it lies with um, yeah, six forms not, not okay not Joshua enough. so the, the, it's easy to attack uh, you know the, the the Oxford institution people in silly gowns and and, and silly uh, you know mortables rather than attacking the real problem which is that we're just not seeing enough students from this background who, who are getting the grades but is that also not the case regardless of you know 
the colour of skin, white working class kids. The reality is that a lot of this will be explained by socioeconomic background, the schools that these young people attend, uh, issues of family breakdown, uh, issues of poverty, issues issues like that. Loads of education attainment of the mother, all these different things which are indicators of how well a child will do at school. And then, of course, their ability to get the grades to then go on to universities, certainly to apply to top universities, not just in Britain, but in the world, as, as, as Oxford and Cambridge are. Um, all of those actually if you put together, they can completely explain this. And yet at the same time, there is now a finger being pointed at Oxford, not just by David Lammy, but also by an awful lot of uh, ex alumnus like the likes of Robert we- and Peston and others, so the ITV uh, presenter, um, is basically accusing accusing a, an educational institution of basically being racist. It's incredibly damaging, isn't it? Now, to address uh, Mr Young's point, I would agree that there is responsibility on uh, there is responsibility on the education system in the UK. However, I would not agree that Oxford is free from responsibility. Mm. Now, uh, if as 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 I, I do agree with uh, Mr. Young that there isn't enough black applicants applying, and that's why we do our work at the Oxford ACS. And you do lots uh, of outreach, don't you? You go into schools which have a large black community and and tell them that Oxford is for them. Exactly. So what we do, we recognize that there are deficiencies in the education system and our programs start as early as year nine. So we have workshops for year nines. We have shadowing days for year 11s. We have our annual access conference, which is in its fifth year, um, coming up on the 6th of July in the British Library um, that targets year 13s, all about dispelling yeah. myths around Oxford. And I think this is where the responsibility uh, falls to Oxford's feet. And to be fair to Oxford, it has recognised this and it has given us tremendous support in, in our community-to-community engagement. Uh, coming from a state comprehensive school in South East London, um, I know that it, it, to the, the application for me being encouraged to apply for Oxford was as simple as seeing people who looked like me, seeing that there was a space for me, seeing that I would be comfortable. Yeah. Because I think it's, it's often easy to forget Oxford isn't just um, the British institution, but it is also a university. And when students are coming here, they do want to feel comfortable. They do want a space where they can be themselves and they can enjoy themselves. And Um, and can you only do that if there are other black people around? No, I, I, well, no, but exactly. That's well, the thing. I mean, there's, there's, the whole thing seems to be that there need to be more black faces to get more black faces. But that's sort of self-perpetuating issue, then, isn't it? No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, um, black people need other black people to feel comfortable. I'm saying that it contributes to the feeling of being in a space where you can feel like you can be yourself. If there are cultural differences between groups of people, then people will necessarily feel uncomfortable uh, displaying what is natural to them in a space where they feel like they cannot. So there is a part to be played. uh, I don't know what the cultural differences are given by someone simply having black skin over white skin. If you went to a state comp as opposed to maybe Eton, there's going to be a bigger cultural divide between those uh, those two uh, students than there is between a black or a white student from a from a state comp, isn't there? I would agree, um, but I would but also it say... It's about all about colour. I just I think I do find it about colour. Is Oxford University racist? But I think that that stems from the fact that uh, David Lammy asked some questions of Oxford University. They responded to say that he was incorrect in his um, assumptions that he made. And then uh, looking at the data that's been produced, he was actually correct and right. So on the face of it, it does seem like there is an issue and a problem with their admissions policy, and they need to explain that. I mean, if if there are only a few uh, black students at Oxford, do you think that's down to a racist admissions policy, or do you think there might be other reasons? Well, it depends on how they uh, administer their policy. It could be um, an unconscious bias. It could be institutional racism. Uh, there needs to be uh, it needs to be looked into so you can determine. Uh, what it is and why this is the case, because it definitely isn't the case that there isn't enough talented and uh, bright black students who could go to Oxford. So if, if there isn't a lack of talent, what is the Well, the, the figures actually suggest quite different, actually, in terms of the number of uh, black students in the country who actually get the grades where they could even consider applying. Uh, you're, 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 you're into very, very, very small numbers, actually. Well, I think there has... There's been evidence shown that there are a number of students who have um, had the grade and who have applied. Yeah, four out, four out of five students been, who apply to Oxford. And no, no, no. Four out of five students who apply to Oxford don't get in, whether they're white or right. black.
Right. But if there's an unconscious bias in the system, right. so if you look for certain things, say what you do uh, yeah. in your spare time, yeah. and it means that they're looking at a certain job that you do in your spare time, that there's no access for that job yeah. or role as a black person. Then that they've, is yes, they, they've, not, they've not been doing a work problem. experience at Goldman Sachs. They, yes, they've been working right. at the local exactly. the burger takeaway like most of us yeah. did. 